Yeah, go. So what we have here is a bacon banjo. Bacon is a very famous banjo maker um, in the old days, old days being teens, 20s, 30s. Uh, I don't believe they're still around anymore. This is a plectrum banjo, and it is a banjo that was played a lot in the original style of jazz before, actually before guitar. Um, Plectrum banjo is tuned in different ways. Some people tune them like a five string minus the fifth string. Uh, there's other tunings that can be done. And it's a very fast percussive rhythm style, old school jazz. Eddie Peabody was a famous uh, banjo player uh, from the past. I think there's probably still recordings and YouTube things of him playing. There's still guys doing it contemporary with Dixieland music. That's where you find this played now, mostly disc Dixieland music. It's a tenor long neck, but not super long. There's different styles. This is your standard uh, plectrum, plectrum meaning pick, percussive like that. And it's in amazing shape for its age. Uh, a little worn, but you know, after over a hundred years, just about, who wouldn't be? Uh, whoever owned this in the past must have played either professionally or as their passion because the frets are pretty worn for something this old showing that somebody played it like crazy. It's got a lot of this big shiny spot on this uh, Remo Weather King head. It shows where somebody just played it so much. It usually has this satiny like finish and it has this now shiny spot where there's your, your stroke pattern where somebody was just beating the hell out of it. Um, it's one of those types that's good for restoration and really brought back to life quite nicely. It's heavy. Um, it has a bell brass ring in here with usually a maple ring around that. Um, it's got an interesting individual fine tuning style tailpiece, which it was something that they used to do in the old days. It was long forgotten. Come modern times, now contemporary guitars sometimes have fine, fine tuner tailpieces. So you tune, you put your string on, you tune it at the headstock, like normal. Um, during the course of playing, if a string goes out a little bit, you come back here and you fine tune it. Uh, violins have had fine tuners on strings for years, so you don't have to get crazy with the tuning machine. You can do it little tiny bits at a time. You can see it moving just by this simple increment here, like that. It's got a nice original bridge. The head is still tight. It's amazing how the head is still tight for all these years. The only bummer is if someone put on nylon strings, which banjos do not have. They use steel strings, very thin steel strings. And um, this is kind of very accommodating because you can use a ball end string like a regular guitar, which some banjos companies make ball end strings, or loop end strings with a hook that you could hook on here. This is really a, a fine example of old Americana uh, technology. It also has a knee lever, which I think I'm going to have to see if she still works. A knee lever was a mute internally. It's an armature that you could use to during you while because a banjo like in this manner is played uh, in a sitting position like so, and a player would keep that there, kind of mute during a time when the singer or the other musicians had to take their solo. He could, he could chill because even with nylon strings, it's a loud instrument. With steel strings, this thing's going to be about 20 times louder. They're incredibly loud. Uh, basically, it's a snare with a guitar neck on it, you know. So, uh, I haven't had the chance to get into it and take it as far as we need to go. But I know uh, once we start getting into it, it's going to be pretty cool. If you look on the back, it has the old bacon uh, little yeah. plate that has all the info on it. It's a very cool and an incredibly good shape banjo for all its, its years. An yeah. interesting thing that somebody did, it, it may have been original, I don't think so, is that at the position markers, somebody put rhinestones. This represents the original plastic position markers, but a lot of performers of those days would put rhinestones so that they wouldn't have to look at the fingerboard. They could feel, it's a bump, and you can feel it's you're at the fifth fret, the seventh fret, the ninth, the twelfth, and it's a cool little little trick. Where how does he know where to put his fingers? His thumb tells him. So it's a cool old show show trick. And uh, this is got a name. 
Chuck Kempel. So this could have been either modified, this piece here looks like an addition, an inlay, or he may have been a famous banjo player and had a custom one built for him. You know, we don't know. These are called planetary gears. Um, they're very interesting how they work, and they're better than the old-fashioned friction pegs found on most banjos, or cheaper ones. There's actually a three-gear uh, unit in here that's very elegant and really nice. So this thing is cool. This is a, this is a wonderful, fabulous banjo. It really represents uh, America's past and somebody's love and, and passion. So do you have like a general ballpark idea of just to kind of, I mean, I'm not talking about getting it back to pristine condition, but mm -hmm. just to sort of refurbish it so it was. Depending on how far we'd want to go, once I start taking things apart, you know, during the course, of some people want these things being, to be looking like brought back to uh, make it look like what was brand new in the 1920s. Well, sure, do you have that kind of money? <laughs> but we wouldn't do that to you. The best thing on something like this, so that the family or friends could love it again, is to get the old car running. It may not go for a long trip, but you can definitely drive it around the town. Okay. And if that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, who knows, you... Charlie may be the new king of, of plectrum banjo. In the, <laughs> nah, the, ba the, I mean, the family's going to keep the banjo. Cool. That cool. being said, uh -huh. you know, it wouldn't be that I wouldn't play it some if uh, oh, yeah. we get it uh, restored. Cool. It's a different fingering because I believe um, plectrum banjo is tuned, I think, either in fourths or fifths. I can't remember. So the tuning is a little different. So the fingering becomes different to create the same type of chords. Uh, or says voice of the chord but if anybody out there would like to see what this thing was all about you can YouTube um, plectrum banjo and it'll blow your mind just how fast these guys play and it's it's not so it's not fingering style it's played very fast with a very thin pick um, like plectrum guitars mostly it's chord melody and you get those songs out of the chords. And I mean, they play from the first fret to the last fret really fast. And it's fun and cool. And with Dixieland music, other than the um, little bit of slower songs, most of them are very upbeat, happy. Uh, clarinet and banjo played side by side, and then other instruments join in. It's really cool. It's really cool. What would you guess that its value would be in its a current condition b in a playable condition and c if they really you know refurbished it uh i'd have to do a little bit more homework for you but considering its current condition which is not hideous for all its years uh at least two to three thousand dollars possibly more plectrum banjos aren't the banjo of the day more people play five string banjos than they play plectrums. In fact, there's a funny piece of history. After the plectrum banjo became kind of passe and bluegrass banjo became more uh, acceptable and the thing that people started to listen to, um, guys were either having a fifth peg put on and a modification to the banjo neck or they'd get rid of their necks and have a, a banjo a repair guy put on a new neck because it's the same head size here. Mm -hmm. A new tailpiece, new neck, and they turn them into to bluegrass banjos. So out there, there's sitting around a bunch of you know, necks somewhere, pile of necks. Uh, if this thing was pristine, like it was kept in the attic and it never had it, it probably would be worth five plus, you know. And that's one of those things where its value, of course, is priceless to the family because it has such a history to a family. Um, but in the Americana style of instruments from the past, it, it has a lot of value. It's just not one of the hot items that somebody, like a, an old Les Paul or an old arch top from you know, like a 45 L7 Gibson or something people go crazy and spend 20 grand on. But, uh, but it's a very cool banjo. So uh, I think we should bring it back to life. Do it moderately for a fair price. And since Charlie's rich, he's gonna pay whatever I have. <laughs> Did we get that on tape? Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, but I'll be <laughs> Including the laughter. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, <laughs> this is another way of saying it. Shut up, Fred. But uh, we'll, we'll bring it to a point where it's playable and wonderful, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have fun restoring it if you so desire, because I love doing this. So it's very cool.
Thank you. Refreshments will be served momentarily. <laughs>